What's up guys, it's Giannis Outlaw here, and today we've got something pretty cool for you. We did another first shot, so today, a little bit different. We're gonna be doing a 22 pistol, but it'll be a little bit bigger than your average 22 pistol. Uh, this is the smaller version of the much beloved M&P 1522. This guy is instead of being the 16 inch rifle version, this is actually the pistol version with the eight inch barrel, which I think is pretty sweet. Uh, this gun was released in 2021 and it largely was not covered by anybody that I'm aware of and I'm kind of surprised about that considering uh, how useful this gun really could be and how fun it uh, potentially would be to shoot. Now, I say that because I haven't shot this yet, but I have had extensive experience with the 1522. Uh, the rifle version was actually my training carbine for many years and I do have two versions of it and I have modded them a great deal. So. Overall, I've got a lot of experience with the platform, just not with the shorter version. Now, with the shorter version, you are going to get an eight inch barrel instead of the 16s. So you're gonna get a little, less, little bit less velocity, but you get a lot more portability, which is really nice. Eight inch barrel, still a lot more velocity than you're gonna get out of a handgun, like your standard handgun four or five inch barrel. And then on top of that, you get the threaded barrel, so you easily can throw a can on it, and a 22 with a can's a lot of fun. You get an M-Lock rail instead of the old school rail, which is really nice. I remember back in the day with my M&P 22, if you ever saw the old videos I have of that, are you trying to like customize stuff and swap stuff to get an actual rail on there? And uh, it's nice that it comes with not only the M-Lock rail, but it's super light as well, which we'll get into. Also comes with my favorite brace, the SBA3 brace, although, it's a little rattly on this version. I don't know if they're all gonna be like that, but that's how it is. And now if you have the SBA three brace, you also come with the standard uh, QD mount and uh, the uh, five position buffer tube there. I think it's five position. No, it's just two two position uh, buffer tube. That's what I get for not doing any research. It also comes with the MOE grip uh, from Magpul, which is pretty sweet with that slightly uh, more vertical angle, which is pretty nice as well. The reason you would get something like this is gonna be for varmint hunting, uh, pest control on the farm, but uh, most of it is just training uh, for your standard carbine. So it has all the same controls as your standard AR and a whole lot less cost when you are shooting it. A little bit more cost in 2021 than you would have had in like 2019, for example, but it's still gonna be one third, one quarter, one tenth the cost, depending on what type of 22 ammunition you're gonna be using. But not only is it a training carbine, but it's also really good for younger people. It's also good for smaller stature people. People just don't like recoil because there's zero recoil on these things. So it's cheaper to shoot, low recoil, and it's still pretty effective. I mean, if you gave me the option of using this for home defense or let's say a bolt action rifle, I'm taking this. A lot of rounds on target really quickly, and it's a capable caliber if you hit the vitals like everything else. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's doable. If it was your only gun, it would certainly work. And on top of that, it does have a little bit of intimidation factor over standard 22s because let's say you don't fire it, they might just think it's an actual AR, which is kind of nice. Along with that, you also get the cool factor of it looking like an AR. So if you can't afford an AR, this is a lot cheaper. So you can go with that as well. Do a little LARPing on the side. Picatinny rail, uh, standard charging handle, standard controls, and a standard mil spec trigger make this very basic, but really good for the money. Now along with that eight inch barrel, you only get a 53 ounce overall weight, and that's because of the uh, liberal use of polymer in the gun, and the fact that it doesn't need to be overbuilt because there's not that much chamber pressure with a 22. So 53 ounces, I mean, I have, I have literal competition handguns that are heavier than this thing, so you'd have no problem if, let's say, you're squirrel hunting, rabbit hunting, something like that, carrying this bad boy all day, and I could easily take a rabbit with this guy out to 100 yards. So really fun uh, hunting experience, and overall, Overall, super useful and valuable and cheap uh, gun, providing that it's reliable and accurate, of course. I'm hoping that it will be. We'll have to go down and see. However, my previous version was absolutely that. The sponsor of this video is Manscaped. There's a lot of reasons to use Manscaped. They actually have a lot of different varying products anywhere from way up here to way down there. There's lots of products designed for grooming that aren't necessarily designed for grooming your delicate areas, in which case Manscaped really shines. If you don't want to get cuts where you don't want to get cuts, it's better to use equipment designed for a specific purpose 
and us, you know, in the gun industry, we completely understand that. You wanna use the right tool for the job, and there isn't just one product that works for everything. There's always specific products that work better for specific tasks. For example, the new Lawn Mower 4.0 waterproof cordless trimmer, the design is a lot better. Having it be waterproof allows you to use it in the shower, and I can't stress enough that it won't give you cuts, again, where you don't want cuts. And now, along with the balls trimmer, you also get the uh, weed whacker here, which is pretty good for the old ears and nose. If you're getting old like I am, and you're getting those weird old man nose hairs, those are not very attractive. So one of the best ways to uh, hit those guys without having watery eyes and all that shit is with this guy. So if you really want a one-stop shop for all your manscaping needs, it's really the way to go. If you want to hit your balls, and then you want to have a different trimmer to hit your nose and your ears, obviously, you know, you'd like to have a different trimmer for that. Uh, the whole kit's a really awesome way to go, and it comes with a whole bunch of other stuff as well. There's also a link in the description that you can use along with the promo code OUTLAW20, which is gonna get you a whopping 20% off. That's a pretty good deal. Along with that, you'll also get free shipping. So if you're interested in Manscaped, all you gotta do is go to the link in the description, click that, and get after it. So with that said, let's go down to the range and uh, shoot it. Uh, one thing I do want to mention is we're going to be also testing out this Wrighton Optic. Uh, Wrighton did send me this uh, red dot here. So we're going to be testing that guy out as well, uh, along with the M&P. And then you'll get a full review of this guy sometime in the future, along with the 1,000 run review of the 22 pistol. This Wrighton red dot is bright as shit. It's only on three, and it's really bright already. That's funny. I was waiting for the recoil. There's no recoil. All right, we're low. These are not like super awesome groups. They're just kind of getting zeroed. It'd be real good too, if it wasn't aiming there. I think we got it zeroed. We only got like five rounds left. I'll just play around on the plates and see. Oh, yeah. Let's go down and look at that 25 yard group on that plate. I mean, it was shot real, fa really fast. I mean, not really fast, but pretty fast. As you can see there, it's like an inch or two group. 22 uh, uh, pistols are just really easy to shoot. There's no recoil to worry about or anything like that. So. You know, headshots at 25 yards, not an issue. All right, so now we're gonna be running some Remington Golden Bullet. That's what we ran the last mag of as well. Uh, it seems to be running that really well. I have like 30,000, 20,000 rounds of that. So uh, it's really cheap 22, and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So I do appreciate when guns are reliable enough to take it. It's just fun. A little hip shooting at 20. Gotta love it. A little bit of fun. Got some of these shorties too. These are my hunting mags. Shoot a little left-handed hip. See how that does. Alright, so now we're gonna do a little home defense stuff. Maybe we will. With the old 22. Hostage target was not a problem. 
this thing is so much fun. That's the thing about 22s, man. Everybody shits on them, but they are so much fun. And the more you shoot them, the better you're gonna get. Beard's all messed up. You're good. What'd you think? It's a lot of fun. I like yeah. it. Hard to beat a 22. It huh? really is. There's so much fun. As far as shooting, pleasure, experience, all that stuff goes, 22 is right up there just because it doesn't break the bank to shoot the damn thing. And you can shoot it real fast, low recoil, no sound necessarily. Put a can on that bitch and there's literally no sound. So I really like this thing. It comes with all the accessories you need, none that you don't, except for maybe those shooting glasses you got there. I'm also digging this red dot. Yeah, the red dot's really nice. I didn't yeah, think it was like gonna it. be that nice, to be honest with you. It's a nice little setup we got going yeah. on here. I like the height of the mount, super clear picture. Yeah. Reminds me a lot of like the Aimpoint Comp M2, although you don't know what that is. Nope, I don't. All right, so now we're gonna have a misfeed. Probably because of how I loaded. That's okay. Sorry. For some reason, loading 22 is sometimes difficult for me. Well, it's a rimfire cartridge, so you have some issues with that. That's why it's inherently unreliable as well. Uh, yeah, so we're gonna shoot at 75 now. We'll shoot that man-sized target, then we'll move to some smaller stuff. It's not gonna knock the poppers over, apparently. Certainly not. Not <laughs> enough power at all. Oh, look at that. Remington Golden Bullet finally strikes. Like I said, it's probably not an issue with the gun. An issue with the ammunition. And a lot of you will be saying, well, then you should shoot premium ammunition for your review. But how many of you out there buy 22s and then shoot exclusively premium ammunition? Let me, let me know in the comments. And that's really easy to hit. I, I kind of want to hip, hip shot it at 75 once just to see. Oh. <laughs> uh, I'll take that. Oh, we had a malfunction because I hip shot it. Yep. If I went back to CCI, the stuff we were using at the very beginning, I seriously doubt this would be an issue. This is pretty classic Remington Golden Bullet stuff. And it might have something to do with the fact that I didn't lube it out of the box. <laughs> I like to do these first shots videos a lot of times literally just out of the box. I take it out of the box, put the optic on, you watch me uh, you watch me zero the optic, and uh, then you get to watch the first shots because that's what a first shots video is. It's not a preparing for a first shots. So we'll go give you my final impressions. All right, so first final impressions, first impressions. Uh, we're going to do this quick because it's starting to rain, and my wife says she will melt, so we're going to hurry up. Um, all the accessories I like a lot. Reliability is 22 standard. Uh, the fact that I didn't lube it up or clean off any of the uh, factory grease or anything like that, and I'm using the cheapest possible 22 ammunition that I can find, uh, the reliability is pretty damn good in my opinion. That second malfunction I think uh, took place just because I was also hip shooting it. So low powered ammunition mixed with less resistance uh, equals usually a short stroke or a malfunction of some type. And in that case, it did. We did have two others that were uh, the same exact malfunction, which would lead me to believe uh, if I used higher pressured ammo, like CCI Mini Mag, 
would not be an issue. And we're gonna test that full with 1,000 round review. Anyway, a good portion of that is going to be hunting style ammunition and high performance ammunition for all you guys out there who want that. I understand that because that's what you're gonna be using in the field and you're gonna wanna know if that malfunctions as well. That being said, the majority of the time you're gonna be shooting a 22, it's gonna be cheap bulk ammunition because it's gonna be for training and fun and all that stuff. So in that case, that stuff functions really great. Accuracy of the gun's pretty awesome. Uh, able to hit even the poppers at 75 yards, which means those pop the middle of those poppers are only six inches. So that leads me to believe that it's very accurate because that was from standing. I even managed to get a hit on the Ipsic target from the hip, uh, which is the first time I've ever done that. So uh, big ups to Smith & Wesson and their like $300 gun that I can get a uh, hip shot with at uh, 75 yards. I've said it a long time and I'll say it again, the M&P 1522 is the best 22 uh, semi-automatic pistol or rifle and I stand by that. Uh, for the price, for the accessories, for the reliability and for the accuracy, now you gotta understand that there's lots of 22s out there that will that will malfunction much more than this. 22s and malfunctions go hand in hand. Uh, I like it a lot. We're gonna do the thousand round review. We'll keep track, obviously. Uh, out of the first like 200 rounds, we had three, mal three malfunctions. It's like 1.5 out of 100. So maybe 15-ish out of 1,000. That would be a good standard to hold. As long as it kept that, I would be fine. I have a feeling though that it's gonna malfunction a lot less with higher quality ammunition. Trigger's good, although if it was gonna be my uh, competition uh, training gun, I would obviously replace it with a uh, trigger that is more in tune with the gun that I'm training uh, that I'm actually using in the competition. Uh, other than the trigger though, everything else works great. SBA3 works great. Uh, and the optic itself is pretty sweet. I've, again, we're gonna do a, a separate review on this. We're not just gonna test it on the 22 though. We're gonna test it on some, uh, probably like a 308 or something like that. That way you can test the recoil and pulse. And uh, I'm gonna beat the crap out of it as well. And you'll probably see the review of this right in optic uh, somewhere down in the future, a couple months in advance, along with the thousand round review of the uh, Smith & Wesson 15. Uh, 22 pistol. So overall, I like it. If you're looking for a hunting gun, if you're looking for a practice gun, or just a gun to have a whole lot of fun with, fits those bills. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Please help out your local homeless shelters. Remember to recycle. I'll check you later. Overall, I don't know why I said overall. I'm done. <laughs>